Hi guys, it's Hinda and welcome to Cooking Fantasies. In today's video, I want to share with you how to make delicious and beautiful French baguette at home and show you everything you need to know to make the perfect and most delicious Parisian baguette with the iconic crunchy crust and the fluffy inside and most importantly, a delicious bread aroma. And I also want to share with you a couple of different ways to bake it or to do it. We will go through all that throughout the video. But before we start, I want to let you know if you are new to the channel, that all the ingredients you're going to need in both the grams and the cups measurements you can find down in the description box as well as a link to the full recipe where you can also print it and if you like delicious and easy recipes don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified whenever a new video is up and let's get baking Start by measuring out all the ingredients you need and I'm going to start by making a kind of starter. So in a mixing bowl, I'm going to add one cup of flour with the yeast and the sugar and I'm going to use a whisk to mix everything together. I kind of want all the sugar and yeast to be coated in flour. I'm mixing directly in my kneading bowl since I'm going to be using a kneading machine. Of course, you can do this without a kneading machine. And to this I'm going to add one cup of warm water. You don't want the water to be too hot or too warm, just a little bit above room temperature. And then I'm going to mix everything together. You will end up with a kind of runny dough, like a crepe dough texture. And I'm going to cover it and leave it to rest or to activate for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, the yeast should be activated and you will have a kind of foamy mixture that smells strong, like yeast and a little bit sour. If you don't have this result by 30 minutes, you don't need to move forward with the recipe, it's not going to work. So you can either make it again or add a little bit more yeast and give it more time to activate. And since I'm going to make my bread in the kneading machine, I'm going to use the same bowl and I will add the rest of the ingredients. I have all-purpose flour, you could also use bread flour. And then I'm going to add honey. The honey gives it a very nice color from the outside, a golden brown, and also helps with the crunchiness, I find. We're going to add olive oil, salt, and the rest of the water we're going to be adding gradually. If you are going to be making the dough with your hands, you can use a wooden spoon at the beginning of mixing the dough since it's going to be still sticky until it starts all coming together. Then you can start kneading it using just your hands on a floured working surface. If you are using the kneading machine with the hook, of course, you're going to need about 10 minutes. That's the minimum. It needs to be well kneaded to have a very fluffy texture. If you are going to knead the dough with your hands, then you're going to need about 15 minutes so take your time use enough flour on the working surface and keep kneading until you're happy with the dough if you are making the dough in a kneading machine you don't need to do this you don't need to knead the dough with your hands i only want to do it just to show you um, the texture of the dough how it should be and how you can knead it or do it with the hands Besides, I really like kneading dough with my hands because it's important to do this from time to time. A kneading machine is always, of course, practical, but when you make the dough with your hands, you really start understanding the dough. You understand when it needs more flour, when it needs more hydration, or when it's too soft. These are things that you cannot understand if you only use a kneading machine. Once you finish kneading the dough, place it in a big bowl. It should be big enough because the dough is going to at least double in size. Then cover it and leave it to rise for at least two hours. This is the dough looks like after two hours. You can even leave it longer. The longer, the better. I just have to, from time to time, keep slightly pushing the side so that it doesn't overflow. And it's important that it at least doubles in size. So if your dough doesn't double in size, doesn't rise too much, maybe it's too cold, then place it in a warm place and leave it to rise, give it time and warmth until it's at least doubled in size. Another option is as soon as you finish kneading the dough, place it in the refrigerator and allow it to slowly rise overnight in the fridge. If you have time to do it, I highly recommend trying to leave the dough overnight in the refrigerator. 
the flavors are so much better. You're going to simply knead the dough, place it in the refrigerator the next day, take it out, leave it for about one and a half hours to come back to room temperature before you proceed. In both cases, the next step is to transfer the dough into a floured working surface. And you don't want to use too much power to knock out all the air bubbles. Gently flatten it and then brush it with some warm water from only one side. Again, the water shouldn't be too hot, just a little bit above room temperature. And you're going to need about two tablespoons or one tablespoon each time. And then I'm going to gently fold it on the water like you see in the video in three times or three folds. In no point of this bread making process, you should be using a rolling pin. This will knock out all the air bubbles, all the gas the dough has developed and you will not have a fluffy bread. At this point, we're going to cover the dough again with a kitchen towel and leave it to rest for 15 to 20 minutes. As you see, it keeps slowly rising. So we're going to be adding the water and folding. I'm going to be repeating this four times. And as you see, I'm gently just using my fingers to keep patting the dough and stretching when needed to be able to fold it. No rolling pin, no kneading, nothing at this point. We wanna keep all these beautiful air bubbles and gas inside the dough saying too much but I really want to give you all the information everything you need to know all the tips to make the perfect baguette but if it's just too much information I'm gonna be leaving down a link to the full recipe where I will be writing down all the instructions you want to keep some flour handy to add it from time to time when the dough starts sticking to the working surface a scraper is also very handy it helps when the dough is soft like today's dough and you also want to keep the water only between the folds. If the water comes between the dough and the working surface, especially if you are using wood or silicon, like I did, it might be stickier, so you're going to need to add more flour. So keep the, the water only in between the folds. So I basically brushed the dough with warm water, folded it and covered it for three times. And the fourth time I'm going to be brushing it and folding it, I'm going to immediately start dividing the dough. This recipe makes four big baguettes or uh, you can make six medium ones. So since I'm making four, I'm going to divide my dough into four equal pieces. And as you see, the dough is quite soft, so don't hesitate to keep adding flour as needed. And the scraper here is almost a must and it helps a lot. Finally, it's time to make or to form the baguettes. And we're gonna start by adding flour to the working surface and patting each quarter of the dough somehow flat. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be very flat again no rolling pin just with the tips or your fingers and do some stretching add flour as needed and we're going to be rolling it as you see and while you're rolling you want to keep uh, slightly pushing to make sure that they don't open when you get to the end part of the dough you want to pinch it using the tips of your fingers kind of making it stick together if you don't do this it's going to kind of pop out when it's rising and baking so you want to make sure that it's slightly closed then roll it out to get rid of the pinches somehow to smoothen it out and repeat with the rest of the dough until you finish the four dough balls Finally, I'm going to roll out my baguettes to make them fit into my baguette baking tray. I highly recommend you to use a baguette baking tray because it helps a lot with both the shape and the crunchiness, the texture, but it's not a must. You can also bake the baguettes on a normal baking tray with some parchment paper. You just need to leave some space in between since they will still rise or get more volume. The baguettes are ready for one more time. We need to cover them and proof them for one hour. After one hour, as you see, the baguettes have gained some volume again. So now what you want to do, either spray them generously with water or simply brush them with room temperature water. 
Now I'm going to sift some flour directly on the baguettes before scouring them. This is optional, you can slightly add a little bit of flour, you can totally leave it out or you can add a generous amount of flour like I did for this one. And now it's finally time to score the baguette using a lame. You must have one that's only for bread, obviously. You can use a simple one or this one, I find it more practical. And I'm going to make three scores on each baguette. I normally start preheating the oven when the baguettes are proofing for the second time, maybe in the second half an hour. And it should be preheated to 240 degrees Celsius, that's about 464 degrees Fahrenheit. It should be very hot. This is very important to obtain this crust. I also like to score the baguettes about 15 minutes before popping them in the oven. I would also suggest you to do so because then they will have enough time to start opening before the baguette starts baking. Once you place the baking tray in the oven, add a container with enough hot boiling water and I also like to splash some water on the bottom of the oven to create a steam shock, then immediately close the oven and allow the baguettes to bake in the hot steam. The baguettes will take between 40 to 50 minutes to bake. You can tell from the color. This depends on the size of the baguettes, the baking tray and many elements. So just keep an eye on the color. These perfect baguettes were made using the very same recipe. The only difference is that I left these to rise overnight in the refrigerator. I also didn't add a lot of flour uh, to the top before scoring them. And I scored them about half an hour before popping them in the oven so these are the differences so you can make whatever you like the most if you used a normal baking tray with some parchment paper you might see that the bottom is not as golden brown as the top but this is just because of the baking tray it doesn't mean that it's not crunchy or it tastes just as good I have tried throughout time so many recipes and so many ways to make baguettes and this is for me the perfect recipe and the perfect way to make baguettes at home. They are really perfect, they have an amazing bread aroma, so delicious to eat just by themselves. They have the perfect crust, the perfect inside and they always come out so good and even for until the third day they will still stay so soft. And another good thing about this baguette, just you can just wrap them really good with some plastic foil and you can freeze them. When we need a baguette, when I make a delicious meal to go with bread, I just take it out of the freezer, pop it in the oven with some steam for a few minutes and then you have just like a freshly baked baguette that is homemade, that's made with so much love and tastes really good. I hope you'll be trying out this recipe soon and I hope you let me know how they turned out. Practice makes perfect, never forget. And I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and see you soon in a new video. Happy baking!